All right, so my name is Justin Brightop. This is another episode. Well, not an episode of the Unboxing Authority, but it's the Unboxing Authority YouTube channel. I want to show you guys these baby chicks. They're unboxed. They're uh, born. They were born on March 17th, and today is March 22nd, 2019. So this is their second day since I've had them. And I've observed something very interesting. You know, this is my first time raising chickens, chicks, but I learned something uh, watching this that I think people need to observe. So as a lot of people know, chicks and chickens, if they were to exist in the wild without anyone taking care of them, or even when they're just let out open range, they get their food out of the ground, okay? They roost up high and they eat food out of the ground. And even if you raise them without a hen, without any other chickens around, they have this all programmed into their brains. They have this all figured out. And it's, it's interesting because they're pecking at the ground. Watch them in the corner. They're all pecking at the ground. They peck at the wood too. They peck at everything. They're trying to find bugs in the ground to eat. And there are none that's in the feeder there. And that's why they prefer that feeder. They prefer that feeder because that feeder, um, they stick their head through the hole down into it to get the food. If I bring them a different kind of feeder, even the one they were taught to use in the store, this is the one they were given in the store, they won't eat out of it. When given a choice between the two, same food, but here it is. Here's the other one. It hangs near this, and when they're older, they'll probably like this one. But they, this, this one doesn't require them to sit up high and put their head through a hole down into the ground and peck and eat something. So they, the only thing they did in this is poop in it. They, they won't eat. They put kick straw in it. That's it. Okay. And it's all because they're programmed to do that. Okay. What would happen if these chicks decide to rebel against their programming? Well, if they were in the wild, they would die. They wouldn't evolve. They wouldn't do anything. Um, they obviously were created. Okay. And if these chicks, you know, decided not to roost, the predators would get them. All that kind of thing. They love to roost, and they love to, they love to huddle together. They, they just interesting creatures because. I always thought that these were, you know, behaviors that they learned later on in life, you know, after they became, after they matured, they didn't see these behaviors express themselves or these uh, programming until they got older. But you see all of the programming, other than, I guess you would say maturity, um, right after they're hatched, they even know how to fly. Um, they, they got clear on top of that water container there, uh, which is about a foot tall. And so, you know, they, they know how to fly, they know how to roost, and they know, let's see, you pecking down in that wood right there in those little holes, trying to find bugs that would be living in the wood. And I don't know exactly why those two are pecking each other, but anyway, the pecking order or something like that. But see how his head is down in that feeder? Like he's, he's down in the ground looking around for bugs and that sort of thing. And it's, and it's just very interesting. Um, you know, there's, you don't, if you were to build a robot, even a self-aware robot, um, you know, with art, you still have to put the self-aware programming into it. These, these come fully programmed and their program is to do a couple different things to ingest protein and calcium and grit and to transform that into eggs and feathers and and uh, you know to serve mankind basically so it's just an interesting thing to think about well what if we as people decided to go against God's instructions for us you know he created all life on the planet mankind has not created any life um, God has created all life on the planet. And what if we decided to rebel and go against the commands and the laws and the rules he gave us in our books, in our in our Bible, in the instructions he gave us? You know, these chicks, they don't seem to have free choice. 
They, they seem to be born programmed to do what they do. And that's what they base all their decisions on is their built-in programming. And it would take a lot to get these chicks to go against their built-in programming, which is why they refuse to use that feeder when the other one is present. When that one's present, they eat out of that one. Now, thankfully, they're not roosting on it. Now, they're roosting on that that one by one I put in there, two by two I put in there, because otherwise, I'd be pooping all over the feeder again, like they did last night, and I don't want them to do that. And I don't know if they're going to sleep on the ground tonight, or if since I put that bar there, their instincts, their programming is going to kick in, and they're going to roost on the roosting bar there. They like the roosting bar, so I'm not quite sure. Um... They were winding down, it's the end of the day. They were winding down, getting ready to sleep. I had to turn the lights on in here to get them to go back to pecking everything so you guys could see what they do. They're very energetic. They've got tons of energy, um, you know, these Rhode Island Reds do. And uh, someone was watching them today and said, look, they're all perfectly healthy. They're all perfectly healthy, strong, hardy birds. Um, any stuff they gave them at the store to make them energetic is out of their system. Um, they do poop a lot. But uh, anyway, so for those of you wondering, you're going to see videos of me building chicken coop and raising these chickens and all that great stuff. But I just thought that it would be a good idea to do a video talking about the programming of just these chicks. You know, there's lots of other types of life out there, lots of other uh, animals and things, and uh, these ones, you know, they're they're interesting. Every type of life that God has created is interesting. And uh, anyway, so um, having talked about that, there are more serious things to talk about here in life. Um, I watch the television, you know, Christian television, and it's amazing the people that they allow to speak in the churches. Some of them are simply, um, speakers, motivational speakers that happen to use Christianity as a platform, and they claim to be Christians, and they probably are Christians, but they teach things that are very ungodly. Um, for example, there was a woman who was uh, preaching on television today, and she is telling people that you just have to do what the, use the talents God has given you. Now, she wasn't talking about glorifying God. She's she was actually talking about using these talents to do things that are wicked. Like for example, she is talking about a man who's the voice of the Lucky Charms, um, the the Lucky Charms serial. Uh, whatever they call that that guy, the mascot. He's a little demon or whatever because it's the uh, St. Patrick's Day and all that. They have those, the pagan version of it where the, the leprechauns, that's what they call them, are, are demons. And he's voicing the demon and, and they're showing magic and all these things, you know, in children's commercials. And that is not a godly thing. It's a very ungodly thing. No matter how you, what your opinion is on the matter, the Bible tells us it's a very ungodly thing. And I'm not trying to judge that man specifically. I'm just trying to use that as one example. She started talking about all kinds of things. She was talking about how you can go to a website, you can record your voice, and people can listen to it and decide if they want you to read a book for them or be a character or whatever. And that's great if it's glorifying God. But if it's not glorifying God, if it's evil, if it's witchcraft, if it's sorcery, if it's magic, if it's if it's any kind of evil, then you shouldn't be doing it. You know, there are some act actors, actresses, speakers, and they get to choose what jobs they'll accept and what ones they won't. And some actors and actresses only do Christian films, you know, and they still need to pick between those Christian films and figure out which ones are uh, are godly and which ones are ungodly okay but um but that's just an example so obviously you know all this stuff invades the church i've seen what people call the yoga faith being brought into churches 
And I'm not just talking about the exercises, okay? I'm talking about what they call the yoga faith. And they'll say, oh, it's just exercises, and oh yeah, there's this you know pagan belief attached to it and all that. But when, when they talk about it, they call it the yoga faith. And I'm like, well, it's a faith, it's a religion, you know? And the Bible says that when you participate in those types of things, that destruction will come upon you and your household, that you'll lose everything that there is that you have, you know, everything you care about, you'll lose it. Destruction will come upon you suddenly. You'll have no place to get warm. You'll just all kinds of nasty stuff, stuff we've I've already seen happen to people, and it's just terrible, you know. And people just have all kinds of weird ideas and notions and you know, an interesting one that the Bible talks about are mediums. And Saul got into mediums. And um, mediums are people that say they channel or, you know, speak directly for, like they're being possessed by and speaking by, through, someone speaking through them. And they can even say God is speaking through them. And there's a big difference because if you, you know, if somebody says, turns and looks at you and says, I'm God now, I'm possessing whoever's body and I'm speaking to you. That's a medium, okay? That is not God speaking to you. God doesn't speak to people that way. When God speaks to people, he does it himself. He'll send a messenger, but he does not take over the messenger's body when he speaks. He doesn't do that. They still have free will, unlike these birds that are programmed. And, and God has possessed animals in the Bible and spoken through them. We've seen that, but not people, okay? And what happened when... Saul went to uh, the witch of Endor. The witch of Endor, he went there and God spoke to him or whoever he was, you know, Samuel, whoever spoke to him and asked him why he was going to the witch instead of going to God. And so God can speak through evil to you to tell, ask you what you're doing and why you're doing it. But, um, you know, there's been a lot of witchcraft recently, just a lot going on. And it seems, you know, I talked to someone today about that, asking, I said, what can we do? What can we do to bring people out of the wide road to the narrow road that leads to life? And they said, fasting and praying for others. And I'm starting to think that's the real strategy. It's not fasting and praying for yourself to get something. It seems that fasting and praying has the most effect when you fast and pray for others. You know, Jesus said, these kind can only be driven out by fasting and praying. You're fasting and praying for others, for them to be free of demons and things. Not for yourself. I'm not saying you can't fast and pray for yourself, but it seems that the effectiveness of it is is it's more effective when it's done for others. Look at how those chicks kick up that straw. It really makes a mess sometimes. I'm glad we raised up that water there so the straw doesn't go into it because that was a real mess and they pooped in and everything and now they're not just by raising it just like a quarter of an inch big difference but uh and having that bar there that looks like they're not pooping all over the feed either so that's good they go up on that bar and they they poop over the edge just like when they sleep at night when they roost they that's where all the poop goes is under the roost and it looks like they're going up there to poop because we've seen him do that in this video here since I started recording. But, um, anyways, any way that's contrary to uh, the gospel and to God's laws is, is evil and wicked. And the Old Testament says if somebody starts teaching you to do that, that they're actually to be put to death. That they're, That's what is called a false prophet, and they're to be put to death. There's different types of false prophets in the Bible, but... Uh, that seems to be the most serious one, is somebody who starts telling you to follow something contrary to God. And so, you know, people are doing a lot of desperate things, a lot of crazy things. You know, I watched a video on YouTube, and it felt like God wanted me to watch this video. And I may still not be completely sure of the message, but I, I think I know what message I got out of it so far. I was watching a man who had been accused... Uh, suspected of double homicide, of murdering two people, and he uh, he was living in the mountains somewhere, and the cops had cornered him in a car. He was in his car, and 
He was sitting there with a gun in his hand, making decisions, and finally he decided to just bolt out of there in his car, and he was able to evade the cops. Finally, his tire blew, and it seems like that's a big deal, you know, I mean, he didn't go very far, but his tire blew out. Um, and when you watch a lot of these police chase videos, you see people's tires blow out, and ordinarily they wouldn't blow out. Um, you know, if you a normal person goes through the same conditions. Look at that chick, looks like he's sleeping up there already, even though the lights are on. But, uh, normal conditions, um, the tires wouldn't go out and things wouldn't fall apart like that. So things would just start sparking, especially with the new car, you know. But in these videos where you see him being chased down, that's what happens. And I don't think it's from some crazy police technology we don't know about yet. Uh, because you're not seeing it used in the film. Um, it seems like it's because the destruction is coming upon them. The destruction the Bible talks about. And eventually, uh, the guy is sitting in his car, the murderer, and he's thinking about whether or not he has to go back to jail. Or what he's going to do. And he decides to bolt out of the car with the gun and try to, he, he fires some rounds. I don't know if he was actually trying to shoot anybody. Um, and immediately, uh, several officers gunned him down. There's like a whole, they had a whole army of, of odd officers from different departments there. And they said they called for an ambulance and they, they put on a really good act of feeling very sorry for this murderer that they had just killed. But the ambulance never showed up. You know, I watched it. And they, I think they got to start putting him in a bag or whatever. The ambulance never showed up. And the police acted like... <laughs> he woke the other one up there. The police acted like it was one of their children that had just been killed. Or, you know, their parents had died from cancer. The way that they reacted on the film. Uh, the one who was, you know, being recorded. But the um, other officers didn't seem to be very affected. Not even the female officers seemed very affected by what was happening and uh, it's just very interesting to watch now the Bible says you know that murderers once they're convicted of murder are to be put to death immediately um, and not given a prison sentence or anything like just be you know death sentence right away <laughs> the other one's falling asleep they've been up I think they've been up too long so <laughs> it's their second day uh, here anyway and uh the one's just not another two of them, three of them trying to fall asleep. I'm gonna have to shut off the lights and leave them alone. But I'm just doing this to make this video, and I wanted to show you their programming and how they how they work. It's interesting. Um, but uh, what was I gonna say? So you know, the guy, you know, it seems like there's all this hopelessness that comes over people, and they resort to evil and then they have more hopelessness and uh, you know people people look successful for a while there's this guy named Ray Comfort and he's on YouTube and uh, he does some interesting stuff and uh, he, he helps try to convert people to Christ and it's kind of cool I, I like watching the videos sometimes and I think there's a lot of it that's good and there's probably some of it that needs some work but God has sent him to these people and I think he's doing a really good job and uh, there's this other lady on YouTube very influential and she claims to be an atheist and she confronted Ray Comfort and Ray Comfort confronted her and I felt like God was leading me to take a look at her channel and just see what she was talking about who knows maybe she'll check out my channel and uh, it looked like from the titles of the videos, because it wasn't just about atheism, it wasn't just about, you know, one evil thing or another. It was like every video had a message justifying some type of evil and, uh, you know, some type of, of ungodliness. And so, and, and maybe she doesn't see it that way, but it reminded me of people that, you know, like... Um, scientists, atheist scientists who are getting money to research and come up with new things about evolution and why God doesn't exist and all these other things. And that's what her YouTube channel reminded me of. Um, it looked like she's being compensated or something. She definitely looks like she's really well off. Um, you know, just the way that she presents herself and everything. She looks like she's doing really well. And, uh, 
you know, so I honestly don't know, but it reminded me of Roseanne Barr. Roseanne Barr recently got a black eye from the Illuminati, and she was kicked out. She can't get a job anymore. There's a lot of things that she can't do, and uh, so, you know, I, I told her, I said, I said, you know, Roseanne Barr had to find out the Illuminati would not forgive her and get kicked out before she'd wake up and decide that we need to repent and pray for the president and things like that. Now, Roseanne Barr, she's still out there a little bit. She's saying that, you know, because the Bible has all this math in it and it's all mathematical, which it is, um, that there's a code which people have always tried to figure out. You know, and you can use this code to, you know, do whatever, I don't know, predict the future, whatever she thinks. And so it seems like she's still on the path of witchcraft. Um, I'm not saying God doesn't speak through numbers, he does. He speaks through everything. I actually wanted to do a video about that, and I think I probably will, about the ways, ways that God speaks and talks to us. It's very cool. But basically, I was telling this very successful woman, I'm like, you know, I hope you don't have to go through what Roseanne Barr went through in order to learn that wickedness doesn't pay off, that, you know, all this success is temporary and and it just doesn't pay off. And I, 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 I told her about, you know, God punishing my enemies and showing her the proof and all that kind of thing. And I don't know if I'll hear back. And if, if I do, based upon her history, it sounds like she's just going to attack me and say bad things about me. And that kind of goes along with... Um, with some what some of the universities say about debates they say if you can't there's like I think three different uh, ways to debate someone one is to debate the facts and the other is to try to discredit who's ever presenting the facts on the other side and so um, it seems that atheists when they get backed in a corner against Christians and they run out of false facts they um, resort to usually uh, profanity, you know, cussing, swearing, this sort of thing, um, or, you know, whatever they can. They might try to report your videos, try to get them taken down or something like that, or demonetized or whatever. Some sort of attack on you personally. They might look up your history, your past, you know, something like that, and uh, try to attack you. And I haven't done that with this lady. I don't know her history. And she probably doesn't know my history. Um, and I haven't mentioned her name yet. But, uh, but you know, I, I just... So, like I said, someone was talking to me today about how to lead people back to Christ. And I was like, you know, the road is so wide and so broad that leads to destruction. And so many people are on it. Even people that call themselves Christians. How do we get them back? How do we, how do we get these people to follow God's commandments and repent and receive his salvation and all that? How do we get them to do it? And um, it's, it's, it seems like it's, you know, impossible. But we know it can be done. We know it's, it's possible. Um, somebody's sending me, somebody's sending me messages. to take a look at that in a minute but anyway um so you know attacking one another whether you're a christian or an atheist i don't think that that really helps um to get to the truth of the matter because the truth of the matter is is based upon the facts of the argument not the presenter if the presenter is flawed and wrong we're all flawed and wrong and that's fine what matters are the facts and what's self-evident. Now, Ray Comfort said that the Bible's crazy and anybody who believes all the stories and the, the stuff in the Bible would, would think they were crazy and that the only reason we would accept those stories is because we humble ourselves and believe that God is God and He can do anything. And there's truth to that. But I believe Ray Comfort has done a very good job, as well as many others like reasonablefaith.org, and even I've done some work to try, you know, to show that the, that the Bible is proven true, that God is proven true. And what I find when I talk to atheists, witches, whoever, that have rejected God and rejected the truth after they've learned it, is that it doesn't matter how much truth you give them. It doesn't matter 
if you prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt, they're still going to act like it's meaningless to them. They're going to, you know, act like it doesn't make any difference to them whatsoever. And, uh, you know, and I'm not saying they won't turn around, but I have proven atheists wrong, and they've even admitted that I've proven them wrong, uh, evolutionists, atheists, and they don't want to talk about it anymore. They don't want to talk about God or atheism anymore because they know that they're wrong and they know why I believe what I believe and they know that I'm right. And that's that's okay. But what is not okay is that they still reject the truth when they know the truth. And, you know, if, if they, the, reason, the only reason besides bitterness and anger and hatred towards God for not doing what they want, when they want, how they want, is, which is what the devil offers... You know, falsely, it's a lie, but he says you can have what you want, when you want, how you want. Um, the, the, the thing about that is that if that's not the reason they've rejected God, the reason is, is because they like the kingdom of darkness. They like Sodom and Gomorrah. They like the evil side, and they want to embrace it for its rewards, whether it's, you know, sex with whoever they want, drugs, alcohol, money, uh, any kind of success, fame, whatever it is. And the more you have, the more you want. The more the more you have in the kingdom of darkness, the more you think you need. Well, these chicks are trying to go to sleep. And it's time for them to go to sleep. So I say we turn off these lights and let them sleep. But I hope you turn on the light of Christ in your life and accept it. And realize that no matter the cost on earth of following Christ, and no matter the co cost of rejecting evil in this world, it's worth it. And there's a lot of people in third world countries have already figured that out. They've rejected their family. They've rejected everything. Or I should say their families rejected them because they chose Christ. And they were forced to choose between Christ and their family. And they choose Christ. Um, sometimes they're forced to choose between a death sentence and Christ. And they choose the death sentence. Okay, so there's definitely something to Christianity. There always has been. There always will. It's, it's never going to go away. And that's what the Roman Empire uh, figured out. And that's why the Roman Emperor pretended to become a Christian. And um, tried to assimilate Christianity into the Roman Empire. Um, because they realized that no matter how many Christians they killed, it wouldn't go away. Because it's the real deal. Okay. So, anyways, you can check out my website and find out more about God. Uh, www.mindblowingidea.com you can go to christiancourts.com and you can just go to my youtube channel and check out the playlist that there's christian playlists so anyways thanks so much for watching god bless you and thanks thanks so much and please share this with your friends and there's links in the description on how to uh accept christ as your savior so um you know that's one thing i never like to do is end a video like this without talking about how to accept Jesus Christ. So let's go ahead and talk about that. God is one God. Okay? The Lord thy God is... Whoops, this is the wrong hat. Is one. Okay? He's one God. And uh, he's not three gods. He's one God. Okay? That's what, what, what it says. And we're supposed to worship him. He created everything in this world. Everything in the universe. He created gravity, time, space, uh, the existence of the universe itself, and he's uncreated. Okay? That's part of the creed. That's part of what we believe. God is uncreated, and he's created everything. Okay? And so he knew that by giving us free will and free choice and not making us like these programmed birds down here, that we could choose between good and evil and that we would choose evil. He knew that because he can see the beginning from the end. He exists outside of time and inside time at the same time. So he made a plan to send himself as a human being into the world. And it was God. He sent himself into the world. And he was able to talk to himself, not because there's three different gods, but because God is omnipresent. He exists in all times at the same time, everywhere at the same time, inside and outside time. And so when he put himself in a human body, he was able to talk to himself the himself that's omnipresent that isn't confined to a human body in space and time. And he led himself and, and instructed himself. And he taught us what to do. 
He healed people. He did many miracles and demonstrations. He confronted evil. And he went to the cross and went through an illegal trial at night that was held at night. A secret trial with false witnesses against him. He put up with it. He didn't, he didn't fight back. And he, uh, he was tortured and drug around between kings and, and the Roman government. And uh, the king and the Roman government. And he, he was uh, sentenced to death. And he's put on the cross so that you wouldn't have to be, so you wouldn't have to go to hell. And he died for your sins. He died for, he took your place. He paid the fine, as Ray Comfort says. He, he paid the fine for your mistakes, for your sins, so that you could go free and go to heaven and be with him. So we're going to pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for coming and dying on the cross. Thank you for everything you've done for us and all things you've given us. Thank you for salvation. Please lead us and guide us into all truth. We accept your forgiveness. We receive your Holy Spirit and ask for it to come upon us. We ask for it to lead us to be baptized and to find a good church. And Lord, we pray for everyone, for all people everywhere, that they would come back to you, that they'd know your truth, and that they would be able to escape judgment and condemnation and all all the you know horrible things that happen to those who do not repent. But Lord, for those who you know will never repent, we ask for you to put them out of our way and stop have them to stop causing evil in this world. And Lord, we pray for everyone. We pray as you taught us to pray. Thy Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Do you want to learn to follow the commands of the Almighty One True God? If you do, go to ChristianCourts.com. There's a free PDF book you can download, audiobook, and video where you can listen and learn God's laws. Make America great again. Help establish Christian law in communities all across the world. God bless you.